Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I welcome you all in this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to learn about the cytoplasmic signaling. And uh, before we begin our discussion, and, uh, whatever we have studied so far is actually saying that cancer cells invent novel means of growth and division or is it the same setup which is being utilized by the cancer cells so according to the current knowledge it has been observed and it has been established that the cancer cells doesn't invent any additional means of growth and division rather than that instead of inventing some novel means they of growth and proliferation the already available cellular machinery is being utilized by them so in our previous discussion what we learned was that there is a growth factor and upon the exposure of that growth factor to a cell via GFR which is called growth factor receptor there is a signaling cascade which is being initiated inside the cell now this initiation is either being influenced by certain uh, factors which are present inside the cell today we are going to in study a portion of it and this is called cytoplasmic signaling right so how these growth factors actually communicate downstream the cytoplasm in this regard what we have learned is that in order to study the cells operation the first and foremost thing was established by the earlier studies which says that in order to make a cells uh, synchronized during cell division the first strategy is to culture them and after culturing them put them in a starvation so by starvation means that the serum deprivation is being introduced in these cells so the cells irrespective of their different cell cycles attain a quiescent phase now this quiescent phase is actually as the name indicates put the cells in dormancy that phase is generally called as G0 phase now this G0 phase after putting the cells in G0 phase the cells will remain uh, stable but they won't proliferate or they won't ex uh, divide further later on when we expose these cells with the fresh serum stalks we observe a sudden surge we observe a sudden surge of certain uh, certain genes present inside these cells and these genes are called immediate early genes so if we introduced serum and we noticed a surge of certain genes these genes are called immediate early genes and their surge was exposed as noticed in 0 30 and 60 minutes the red color what you are looking right now is the amplification of certain set of genes while the bluish color indicates there is a uh, what you can say late expression or reduced expression of these genes uh, on an overall scale it has been observed that around roughly around 229 genes in fibroblast cells upon starvation and re-exposure of the serum uh, showed an immediate early gene transcription okay that means the cells entry from g0 to uh, cell cycle phase is actually mediated by these sets of transcriptional machinery that that was a very promising finding and later on people tried to identify those contributory genes and their roles which have a very critical role towards the cellular growth but in addition to that there was an interesting observation made when the same when the same let's say this is an a part and this is a b part and what will happen if we mix the serum with cyclohexamide now the cyclohexamide compound is basically meant for halting the cell growth right so what will happen if we add serum plus mixed with cyclohexamide complex now this cyclohexamide was basically meant for inhibition of cell cycle cell cycle should not proceed 
It has been noted that even in the addition of serum mixed with cyclohexamide complex, the cells still enter the cell cycle, so they proliferate. Do the proportion of this proliferation may be not substantially enough, but the cells proliferate instead of a, a pronounced amplification, the cells still proliferate, and this proliferation proves one notion that the de novo protein synthesis was not required. The protein components were already present, the protein required for the cell to act and proliferate was already present within these cells but upon the exposure of a growth factor although the transcription machinery has been halted by cyclohexamide that protein components were substantial enough to initiate the process of proliferation all right this means there was no new protein synthesis which was being reported the already uh, present protein compounds were enough to initiate that process of cell proliferation okay but what are these immediate early genes who were being transcribed the er immediate early genes are those transcription factors which which based upon their transcription either trigger in FOS June or, or in UR77 this is a hormone receptor for in case of steroid hormones these are the nuclear factors now these factors upon exposure of serum uh, they start immediate transcription and this immediate transcription is being transmitted to the nucleus fibronectin is required for the extracellular matrix growth beta actin gamma actin tropomyosins are the components which are present in the cytoplasm so recently bound growth factor ligands upon activation of the growth receptors activate the pre-existing translational factors this what we have observed once we have uh, mixed those serum compound with a cyclohexamide as we have discussed in the last slide now this activation leads to the uh, immediate early genes uh, response and these immediate early genes translate or transcribe certain set of messenger RNAs which provoke the transcription of there is a immediate and there is a delayed the next word is the delayed so there would be a delayed early genes response now these delayed early uh, delayed genes are also required for the cell to continue that process of proliferation and division okay there are two sets of uh, transcription factors which are being are uh, the genes which are being tr translated upon the exposure of upon the exposure of growth factor and growth factor receptors the number one are the immediate early genes then there are delayed genes now these delayed genes response is being communicated to persist the process of proliferation and division further Achha. Uh, the next question which comes in anyone's mind is that how growth factor communicates with the growth factor receptor signals inside the cell. Uh, so far what we have learned is that there is a growth factor and it communicates with GFR and there is a process of tyrosine kinase phosphorylation. Now we want to learn how we can say that this tyrosine kinase is going to activate certain proteins present inside the cell. Right? So in order to decipher this pathway, the most interesting example was taken by from Dorsophila, Dorsophila meningesters. Now in Dorsophila meningesters eyes, the eyes were not the perfect form of eye, but it is composed of seven kinds of cells. Now if we count these cells, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now the wild type, uh, the wild type flies contain these seven kinds of cells these kinds of cells are generally called as omatidia or omatidium one cell now in mutant forms in mutant form the mutant the mutant omatodidia omatodidia contains the six cells and the seventh cell is missing look at the look at the structure now the seventh cell this inner cell is actually missing in the mutant forms there is no cell inside here okay this indicates that there is a mutation of seventh gene all right in dorsophila lacking these eye structures all right so we know 
there is a seven cell which is a seventh gene mutation now this seventh gene upon its uh, what you can say sequence similarity we came to know that this seventh gene has a structural homology with fibroblast growth factor receptors because they also contain tyrosine kinase activity and the seventh gene mutation which failed to be present over here also contains the same property so in humans FGFR tyrosine kinase receptor has a structural homology or similarity with the seventh gene of torsophila melangusters mutant G form so this seventh gene actually communicates further with a downstream factor which is called as son of seven SOS now this is important now this son of seven upon its sequencing we came to know that this sequence function is slightly similar what we have observed in yeast and it is responsible for guanine exchange factor remember the guanine exchange factor is actually a component which is required for uh, triggering RAS from inactive form to an active formation so uh, very quickly over here RAS generally binds with GDP and this guanine exchange factor is basically required to get rid of this GDP, remove this GDP and trigger RAS to bind with GTP complex. Now this GTP complex is basically what we call as an active form of RAS and this active form of RAS further triggers the downstream signaling for division and proliferation. And what we learned from Dorsophila melangaster was that the deletion of 7th gene is failed to bind with the downstream component which is son of 7. The son of 7 structure homology, uh, has a homology with guanine exchange factor and this guanine exchange factor is actually some pa uh, something important required for converting and converting an inactive RAS, inactive form of RAS to an active form, right? So we are making up a story and this story was uh, telling us what has so far been unknown to us for ages. Now this came to know about one important thing as well. What, what is that? So far what we have compared is the fly, yeast and human, right? So fly, yeast and human are the T components. In flies we have observed 7th gene and in relation to that we observed yeast and the fly 7th gene SOS uh, guanine exchange factor has also been observed in the humans RAS. So there is an evolutionary tree uh, which has also been uh, starting to prove over this point that evolutionary the origin of these genes have uh, some consensus uh, at certain point back in in the initial days so later on we know that there are additional proteins which have also been responsible apart from SOS ke SOS ke saath which or additional components were required let us shack grab to our crack proteins any egg protein complex may be composed of different other proteins to formulate and binding affinity for an activation of a RAS upon exposure to GF and GR GFR activated complex so this protein may be called as shark this is called as GRB2 and this one can be called as crack in case of humans so this complex has been later been deciphered apart from son of seven which is exactly same as GRB2 right so thank you very much for your understanding at this stage and this is all from my side right now okay what we have learned were two important points number one is that the serum exposure provokes the cells to generate immediate early genes now these immediate early genes proteins are already present which proteins are already present there won't be a necessary activation of de novo protein synthesis which is required and since there is no de novo protein synthesis required that has been confirmed by cyclohexamide exposure number two point what we learned was that the serum activation that the serum activation is a process in which uh, number two point was about the serum in, uh, activated immediate early genes mainly are the transcription factors and these transcription factors upon binding trigger delayed res response genes now these delayed genes are the 
facts which are responsible for sustained proliferation now in absence of this sustained proliferation there won't be a division of cells okay the so the cell cycle contains a two step event right now what we have even explained over here thank you very much for your time